introduce for our next lecture uh, Dr. Biao Lian. Uh, uh, Dr. Lian is a, uh, a uh, postdoctoral fellow uh, at the Princeton Center uh, for Theoretical Science uh, here, uh, and he will be talking about uh, fragile topological aspects of twisted bilayer graphene. Dr. Lian. Okay. Right, thanks a lot. Uh, thanks a lot for the introduction and uh, the invitation uh, for me to speak here. I'm local here, so um, this is a, yeah, just an easy talk. Okay, so I'm going to talk about a relatively new concept, a fragile topology, um, and uh, which is actually um, um, present in the twist bilayer And I'll talk about its effect uh, in this in this twist bilayer and some other other systems. So um, I'll introduce some basic concepts, but also um, covering some works I did with my collaborators. Fang Xie, Zhe Da Song, and Andrew Berwick. So, um, so in the first part, I'll just uh, briefly review the conventional topolo topological uh, state of matter, uh, which I'll call a stable topology. And then um, I'll talk about uh, the concept of fragile topology. And then, um, uh, in particular, I'll mention the fragile topology in twisted bilayography um, and their effects. And I'll, I'll, uh, I'll tell about uh, that the topological effects of this fragile topology, um, in particular, um, these two are um, two of our studies, one, one showing there's an effect in Hofstadter butterfly, and the other showing there's, a, um, there's a, some effect in the superconductivity, enhancing the superconductivity. Um, OK. Uh, let me just uh, start with the very basic thing, um, although um, you may already know this. So the topology, uh, mathematically, topology is describing some invariant properties of some object uh, that is uh, invariant under continuous deformation. Um, and the most, um, one of the most simple, uh, simplest example is the Euler number of two-dimensional closed surfaces. Um, uh, you can do continuous deformations to all these closed, uh, closed two-dimensional surfaces, and and you will always find that. Um, it can be categorized by uh, the number of holes um, on these surfaces, which are called genus. And mathematically, this, is a, uh, this can be obtained by the integration of the curvature of this uh, two-dimensional surface. So although this curvature is not, a, uh, is not invariant, it's, uh, I mean, curvature at each point is a geometric quantity, but the integration of this uh, curvature gives you an integer number, uh, which is uh, called the Euler number. Um, so this is a very simple example of mathematically, uh, but in condensed matter physics and also yeah, actually in the, uh, also in high energy physics, people discuss topological uh, theories and topological states of matter, uh, which is basically saying that um, some ground <coughs> states with pro some properties that is invariant under adiabatic inver uh, variations of the systems, uh, system parameters, um, and. The, classic, uh, the most classical example is the quantum Hall effect. Um, basically, if you measure the Hall connectance of the system at low temperatures, you find the Hall connectance is quantized in units of e square over h. And this nu is, e, is a, either an integer or a fraction uh, rational, uh, rational number. Um, so uh, this probably is invariant under small variations of electron fillings or disorders. So in this sense, it's, a, uh, it's uh, the same as the mathematical concept of topology. Uh, there's something invariant under this uh, under uh, deformations. Um, well, um, so um, there are many many ways of discussing topological states matter, but for weakly interacting topological states, usually the uh, topology can be characterized by the band theories. Uh, so in weak interacting cases, you always have the concept of the electron bands. So uh, in this case, you can you can usually define the topological index in terms of the properties of this electron bands. Uh, for example, the integer quantum Hall effect is such a, such a state um, where there are lambda levels. And also, uh, later people discuss chain insulators. Um, so the lambda levels and, or the chain insulators, um, they, 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 uh, they all have bands, electron bands. So, um, and uh, this, this is a well known to be characterized by the chain number, which is basically the integration of this uh, Berry curvature in the Berlin zone. 
And barrier curvature here is defined in terms of the uh, wave functions of the um, of, of that band. Uh, so it is uh, it behaves as a gauge field. So um, and this integration gives you an integer, and the hot conductance we mentioned previously indeed is a um, is is related to Chern number. It's given by the summation of Chern numbers uh, below the Fermi surface. So um, um, so now I, I just talk about what is a what is I call a stable topology, uh, which is also what people mean previously before the the word fragile uh, occurs. So stable topology basically means first you need to have some properties that is invariant under deformations, um, some continuous deformations, uh, but also it requires a, a stronger condition that, that is uh, this topological state is, uh, is stable again, uh, against adding trivial state to it. So in, a band, uh, in weak interacting uh, cases, uh, this can be understood as um, suppose you have these band structures, which, which have some topological index. Um, yeah, this is a Fermi energy. For example, this, uh, these valence bands have some topological index. Uh, then you can add any trivial bands to it. Um, and these trivial bands can, either, uh, can also interact with the, with the existing bands. And the topological index would remain uh, robust. So, um, so this is a this is a what I call a stable topology because it's it's not not only stable against deep, continuous deformations but also you can add these trivial trivial states to it. Um, so here the definition of trivial state or a trivial band is uh, it can be adiabatically connected to the atomic so-called atomic limit. Atomic limit is basically assuming you have a lattice of atoms with orbitals that are decoupled from each other. So in this case, uh, this band, a trivial band, will have local winding orbitals, um, and in the atomic limit, they can, they, you can you can tune them to a zero hopping. So this this will just be a trivial flat band. Um, so uh, basically, um, this means you can add this trivial state, trivial band, and turn on any any allowed hoppings, and this topological index should remain. Uh, so for example, uh, the tri a trivial band you can prove it's always chain number zero. So so the Chern number is actually a stable topological index. So uh, stable topology can also be generalized to uh, when you have symmetries. So in this case, you just require that uh, all the trivial states or, or any uh, winding orbitals you consider ha uh, have the symmetry as you add it. Um, so in this case, um, yeah, again, stable topology is stable against adding trivial bands. And trivial bands uh, here is defined as um, local one-year uh, one functions uh, decoupled with each other, but uh, at the same time they respect the symmetries. So, for example, uh, you can consider uh, adding a time reversal symmetry, and in this case, um, the time reversal symmetry restricts you to uh, that any any bands to be doubly um, any one-year orbitals you added to be time reversal invariant. For example, if you uh, add angular momentum non-zero uh, bands, it has to be uh, plus minus j, um, or if you add a mom angular momentum zero band, it can be a single single band. Um, so this leads to the uh, well-known concept of topological insulator, which uh, Professor Fu also discussed a lot. Uh, so I just uh, quickly go through. So um, yeah, so so for the chain insulator, we already see that the topological index is just the chain number, which is an integer. Uh, for time rosa invariant uh, topological insulator, um, the, uh, the index is a Z2 index. Um, so there's only one, one kind of non trivial state. So, um, in particular, for inversion symmetric topological insulators, um, actually, this uh, time rosa and the inversion uh, together protects a two fold degenerate, uh, protect your bands to be all two fold degenerate. And then, in this case, the, this Z2 topology index is simply given by the product of the parity uh, eigenvalues of the time rosa invariant momenta. So uh, here, I just draw a simple, a simplest example, which have four bands. You have two two-fold degenerate bands here and here. And uh, for example, in this case, if you have uh, parity minus here and plus uh, in all the other high symmetry points. Uh, it will be a topological insulator. So this is a, I draw here as a two-dimensional example, which is the quantum spin hall effect. Um, and furthermore, uh, you can further generalize this to, uh, you can add space group symmetries, 
uh, or crystalline symmetries. And this will lead to uh, further concepts of topological um, uh, states, uh, which are uh, topological crystalline insulators. And people also discuss uh, topological semi-metals. Uh, so when you have space group, uh, space group symmetries, you can have more varieties of uh, semi-metals as well. Um, so again, uh, in this case, stable. If you, if you want to define stable topology, it has to be uh, stable against any trivial band. Uh, but in this case, in this case, you have more symmetries, and the trivial band is defined uh, is defined again to respect all the symmetries. And to do this, uh, if you, you need to put put your um, if you want to create a trivial band. In this case, you need to put the uh, winding orbitals on the so-called weak off positions, which are basically the high symmetry uh, points for your lattice. Uh, just to give you some more uh, examples, uh, for example, in this case. In this honeycomb lattice, the weak off positions, um, there are three kinds of weak off positions. Uh, you have these blue, blue ones forming the honeycomb lattice, uh, this uh, black one forming a triangular lattice, and this, um, these red ones actually form the Kagami lattice. So uh, yeah, in this case, um, if you, for example, if you want to add this uh, orbitals at this red position, uh, you need to add uh, at the, the three positions um, at the same time uh, because they transform into each other under C3. So this, this will give you a three-dimensional um, representation or three, three uh, basically you have three uh, um, degrees of freedom for unicide. Um, and this is a low, lower symmetry case. Uh, so in this case, you just have C2 symmetry. Then you have four distinct uh, weak off positions. You can, uh, if you want to create a trio band, you can put, put uh, your orbital on either of them. Um, OK, so now um, come to the concept of fragile topology. So you might already get, a, get some sense that um, you can actually relax the um, requirement for topology. Uh, so, so topology is basically something invariant under continuous deformations. But stable topology also uh, requires you uh, uh, to be stable, the topology to be stable at, upon adding uh, trivial, trivial states. Uh, but for fra uh, fragile topology is basically defined as um, it is, it is, uh, there is some in invariant topological index for it. Um, basically means it cannot be, so the system cannot be decomposed into several trivial systems. But, but in this case, uh, if you add some additional trivial bands or trivial systems, uh, this topology can be trivialized. Um, yeah, this, is, this might be a little bit um, uh, counterintuitive, but uh, I'll give you, some, uh, give you a simple example to see this. Uh, yeah, so in this case, basically, you can add, add some trivial band to, uh, to a topological system, and after some deformations respecting all the symmetries you have, uh, you can make them into atomic limit, uh, some atomic limit trio bands. Um, this is the concept of fragile topology, first introduced by um, uh, Adrian and um, um, Ashwin. So this is a quite recent. So um, yeah, to see to see a very simple example, um, let's consider a topological insulator with time reversal symmetry breaking. So uh, in principle, uh, if, you, if you break time reversal symmetry, um, the topological insulator um, is no longer stable in the, in the original sense. Uh, in this case, it's called an axion insulator. Um, but, but if you still have inversion symmetry, uh, I mean, if, you, if it is an inversion symmetric TI with uh, time reversal breaking, you can show that there is still some fragile topology in this system. So, um, yeah, this is an illustration of the breaking of time reversal symmetry. So this is just a previous example, a quantum spin hall example I showed. Um, you have two uh, valence bands here and two conduction bands here. Uh, so, yeah, EF is uh, here, sorry. So if you put your EF to, uh, here, your occupied bands, um, there are two occupied bands, and uh, you, can, you can look at, you can still define the inversion um, parity, parity eigenvalues at these high symmetry points. Uh, so these points now are uh, still in, in inversion symmetric, uh, although time reversal is breaking, uh, broken. Um, so you have you find you have two bands with negative uh, parities here, and uh, uh, all the other high symmetry points will have plus uh, a plus parity here. Then um, 
we can think uh, we we can we can take a look at um, uh, what trivial bands um, a square lattice can have. So uh, uh, here I just assume this uh, this is a square lattice. So for a square lattice, you have four kinds of uh, uh, weak off positions. So um, uh, this I, ju I just show a uh, concrete example of how to think about the trivial band. Suppose you put a p optal uh, on this uh, weak off position four. And uh, so uh, basically, this is this is a single band. So you have you have four uh, you have these PZ optals at every every four positions, um, and uh, uh, this is a flat band. So you can you can easily write down the uh, wave functions in momentum space. Uh, this will just be given by this uh, this expression. So we have a, a k is the quasi momentum, but but here you need a tau four, which is the Shift uh, shift of this, um, which which is basically characterizing the position of this uh, four position. So if I define the inversion center of this lattice uh, as as position one, uh, this four will be reflected to this position here. So uh, by looking at this uh, wave function, you can actually uh, find the uh, inversion eigenvalues of this of this band. Um, for example. Um, yeah, if you, if you look at gamma point, gamma point is pretty straightforward. You have k to zero, and so so basically at every side, you every four sides, you just uh, uh, you just get an amplitude one. So this uh, this is the inversion symmetric, but the, but the p orbital itself has a negative parity, so it's a negative sign here. Um, if you look at, look at this m point, um, maybe let's look at this x point. If you look at this x point. Um, so, um, so here you will get a basically if you, if you look at this wave function here you get a i a factor i and here you will get a factor minus i. So under under inversion, um, there's a minus sign here, and plus uh, the original minus sign of, of the orbital itself, you get a plus plus sign here. So in this way you can uh, you can basically um, tell all these. Um, you can you can put your orbitals on various kind of positions. You, you can you can look at what kind of trivial bands you you can have and what eigenvalues you can have. So these eigenvalues basically um, for uh, is the simplest example of the so-called elementary band representation. Basically, um, basically is the representation of the trivial bands. Uh, here are just a list of all kinds of four uh, four positions. And the trivial bands at all these four positions can have these. Um, if you look at the eigenvalues, they they are they are, uh, behave like this. So here, uh, eta eta is the parity of the original orbit orb orbital you put here. So basically, uh, the orbital itself has a parity eta, and then uh, depending on where you put put the orbital, you can have these different kinds of eigenvalues. So now uh, let's look uh, look back uh, this example of quantum swing hall with time reversal breaking. Um, you find you need two negative signs here and um, two plus signs at all the other positions. And if you look at back look at back all these uh, four kinds of eigenvalues, you find there's no way uh, you can there's no way you can choose two two of them to give you these uh, these kind of eigenvalues. So this actually uh, proves it's uh, it's a topological non-trivial state. It cannot be decomposed into uh, trivial bands, uh, atomic limit trivial band. Um, but but again, it's uh, actually fragile. You can actually add a add a for example s orbital at this four position. S orbital just means your parity is plus. And the intrinsic parity is plus. Then you just uh, you, yeah, you just uh, plug in the eigenvalues of this s orbital at four position, uh, and this is the eigenvalues you can get. And you find you find you get a yeah, basically this is what you, what you get after adding this s orbital. Um, but if you look at back, um, what do we have the uh, for for the trivial bands? Um, you find you find these eigenvalues can be decomposed into three um, weak off position. Trivial bands at these three weak off positions. So yeah, this this demonstrates an uh, example of fragile topology. Basically, you added a trivial band, um, but you added and you ended up with three trivial bands after some deformations. 
So this just says this uh, this index is this topological index is uh, is uh, topological trivial uh, in this case by adding just one trivial band. Um, but uh, I want to emphasize that um, this is not arbitrary. If you add, if you try to add some other trivial band, it not necessarily trivializes the system. So so in this sense, um, what trivial bands you you add to it is also is also uh, not arbitrary. Uh, so here I just uh, I want to let you uh, homework. So why this trivialization procedure does not work when there is a time world symmetry? Uh, because we, we know that if, if we have still have this time world symmetry, uh, it has to be a strong topological index, and this cannot be trivialized. Um, yeah, I think you you can figure this out. Okay, uh, so now I. Um, now let's talk about a practical example, the twisted bilateral thing. So, um, yeah, actually, um, the fragile topology um, is a recent concept, but but luckily soon uh, soon people found an example in the in the recently extensively studied twisted bilateral thing. So um, let me just briefly reveal what twisted bilateral thing is. So basically, yeah, this is a monolayer mono graphene, uh, which all of you are familiar with. Uh, so at low energies, uh, the um, monolayer graphene would just have two, um, two direct fermions at k and k prime points of the graphene brain zone. And um, uh, here, um, here, if you look at the direct fermions at these two, uh, these two different values, they have opposite helicities. Basically, helicities, you can, you can define it as the uh, winding of the coefficient of this sigma x and sigma y. Um, the effective Hamiltonian. So uh, yeah, if it's a minus sign here, I, I call it plus, uh, how do you say plus one? And the opposite, I call it minus one. So uh, in general, this uh, in this monolayer graphene, um, these two uh, values always have opposite helicities. So a twist value graphene is basically, um, yeah, you just stack two of them. Um, and as a result, if you look at the burning zone of the two uh, graphenes, um, they are slightly rotated from each other, and uh, what you can see is these two uh, these two direct fermions at the same uh, k value. They are nearby, and actually you can show their couplings uh, are are the strongest. And you can you can basically ignore the hoppings between between this value and that value. So um, yeah, so so and the distance between these two values actually defines a uh, defines the Moray burning zone, which which is the burning zone of this. Super lattice you see from the twisted bilateral thing. So, uh, so in this approximation, basically using this approximation, uh, a twisted bilateral thing actually consists of uh, two two groups of decoupled bands. One band is uh, one group of bands is at value k, and the other is at value k prime. Um, so, under this approximation, if you just look at one value. Um, so before you turn on the interlayer hopping, there you, you just have two Dirac fermions. Uh, but these two Dirac fermions, they are, they are of this, uh, in the same value. So actually, uh, they have the same helicity, um, just, to, just to remember, remember uh, we said that earlier. So, um, so, then, uh, so this one value, one value bands can be characterized by the continuum model um, uh, constructed by uh, this treater and McDonald. So, um, you have these two Dirac fermions of the same helicity, um, so on the diagonals, and there are some interlayer hoppings. Interla uh, the interlayer hopping has these um, modulations uh, of these of these vectors q1, q2, q3, which is basically the period of the Moray uh, the, the Moray super lattice. So this is a periodic lattice potential, and and you have Dirac fermions on the on, uh, on the diagonals. So uh, you can you can further transform this uh, Hamiltonian and diagonalize the Hamiltonian. So then you can get a band structure. So basically, um, what you get is before you turn on uh, Hopkins, you, you just have two uh, Dirac cones uh, which intersect with each other. Uh, after after adding these uh, Hopkins, the gaps will be opened whenever these two Dirac cones cross. So um, yeah, the actual picture is compli more more complicated than this. Uh, but as a result, you get these uh, band gaps. So, um, for example, if you open a gap here, 
we get these lowest two uh, lowest two bands, um, uh, which which is the band structure of this Maurice super lattice. And if, if you look at these two, lowest two bands, there are some properties that are preserved. Uh, that is, um, these derived points are, are still there. They're they're protected by symmetries, uh, which I'll talk uh, talk about soon. Um, and another feature is. Uh, remember that these two Dirac fermions have the same helicity. Uh, basically, uh, means if you if you look at the uh, effective K dot B Hamiltonian near uh, near K point and K, uh, K prime point of the Mori Brillouin zone of the same valley at the same valley, uh, they will have the same helicity. Uh, this is usually not possible for for tight body model. Yeah. So whatever uh, two band tight body model you have, you always get uh, equal number of uh, helicity plus and equal number of, uh, and and helicity minus. So um, so this is a, actually a non-trivial non -trivial part of the lowest two bands. Um, you have you have a non-zero total helicity, and this turns out to be actually a, a fragile topological index uh, for the lowest two bands. If, if if you just look at the lowest two bands. Um, so in this case, uh, the twisted body group thing. Uh, if you just look at one value, uh, it has these these symmetries. Um, and one of the, and this C two Z T symmetry, so T is time reversal. Uh, so C two Z T symmetry is actually the symmetry protecting this fragile topology, which I'll show um, in the following. So, uh, so uh, just uh, to mention, uh, just to recall that if you have a fragile topology, then that means you, you cannot trivialize the system into uh, some local Wannian orbitals. And this also means you, uh, yeah, this is you don't have local Wannian functions. And that means you don't, you don't have a local, local type binding model for the two bands. Um, yeah, so f first let's look at this C2T uh, symmetry. Um, so this C2T symmetry is actually the symmetry protecting, protecting your direct, direct points. Um, basically, uh, so this, C two C two flips flips your momentum to minus, and time also also flips your time uh, uh, momentum to minus. So so this is a, actually um, uh, momentum is invariant under the C two Z T, um, but uh, time also is anti unitary. So uh, just to remember that, uh, so then C two Z T actually uh, acting on your Hamiltonian will will, will uh, give you a, a Hermitian conjugate. Uh, and also, there's a sigma x that, that, that is coming from C2z because C2z actually uh, flips the sublattice a and b. So this sigma here is the sublattice index. So so you get an additional sigma x. So uh, if you have this C2z t symmetry, then this indicates this equation, and that constrains your uh, Hamiltonian. Um, your Hamiltonian has to be of this form. Uh, basically, you cannot have a sigma z uh, matrix. Um, so um, yeah, so so in two dimension you have two two momentums. Um, so you have a chance to to have both coefficient to be zero, and that's a, that's where the direct point is. And this is a this is a um, stable against the small variations of these functions f x and f y. So that that's a protection to these direct points. Um, but this is not yet the fragile topology because um, actually both monolayer graphene, the bands of monolayer graphene and twist body graphene have C two Z T symmetry. So um, yeah, that's not surprising. Um, in both cases, there are direct points. Um, yeah. So so now let's look at what what this uh, fragile topology uh, can characterize more rigorously uh, mathematically. So um, to mention that actually. Uh, in general, in general, the fragile topology as well as strong topology, you, you can analyze them uh, both in the um, both in the way <coughs> to, to examine whether they can be decomposed into elementary band representation uh, or trivial bands, um, or you can you can examine the Wilson loop winding number of the of the bands of interest. So these two uh, these two methods are uh, kind of um, both indications of topologies. So, um, so previously, we just uh, in the axion insular case, uh, I, I, I talked about um, EBR analysis. But now, uh, now let's look at this uh, the other the other index. Oh, sorry. The other index, um, the Wilson loop winding number. So, um, so Wilson loop is defined as follows. Um, basically, we can define. Um, assume let, let's consider just in general m bands. 
So for these n bands, uh, and this is the wave function of the n bands, which is some rectangle matrix I write here. Um, so um, yeah, basically, basically the barrier curvature, uh, we call the definition of barrier connection. Barrier connection is basically uh, defined as partial partial k of this u k or something. So, so if if you if you recall the definition, Watson loop in uh, gauge theories, that's just uh, some integration of the gauge field on the exponent. Uh, so you can you can similarly um, borrow that concept here. Uh, then so so if if you define define some paths in in your burning zone. Um, you can actually um, multiply all these. Um, yeah, you, you can you can multiply all these inner products of these u's. These u's are uh, this is the, from the wave functions, um, and uh, actually, so so this is a, this inner product between two nearby u's is just a, basically e to the i of um, of um, barrier curve, barrier connection. So this is exactly the analog of Watson loop um, in gauge theories. So, so in this case, if you define if you define a closed loop in in, in your Berlin zone, you can always uh, examine uh, the product of this uh, all these U matrices, which is a matrix. Uh, so this gives you a Watson loop matrix um, for these M bands, and you can diagonalize this um, matrix. Uh, yeah, not yet. Okay, so. So if you if you if you uh, write it, write the Watson loop in, in in terms of e to the i w, this w is actually a um, permission matrix. So you can diagonalize this w matrix to get some eigenvalues. Um, that's that's called Watson loop eigenvalues. Um, so um, yeah, then then you can also you, you can also basically uh, sweep your loop. For example, here I define a loop along this k two direction. You can sweep this loop across the k one direction. Uh, so that it crosses the whole burning zone, and look at how the uh, how the eigenvalues change. Uh, in this way, you can define a Watson loop winding number, which we'll see soon. Um, so now let's look at the what C two T symmetry can can give you for for the two bands uh, two band Watson loop if the two bands have this C two T symmetry. So uh, C two T basically, um, if if you act it on this two band uh, two band Watson loop. It basically flips uh, the time also is the uh, it is uh, is anti-unitary, so it flips i and also flips w uh, to w star. So if you have C two T symmetry, this means w is equal to minus w star. So this just uh, so the only possible um, Hermitian w matrix is lambda times some sigma uh, sigma y. So so in this case, this simple case, your eigenvalue is just uh, simply plus minus lambda. Uh, it's defined modulo two pi because it's uh, original on, on the exponent. So, um, because it's always plus minus lambda, there is a chance that lambda can uh, hit zero. Then the two eigenvalues will just uh, cross with each other. Um, so, for example, uh, this is a this is a Watson loop eigenvalues uh, for the lowest two bands of twisted body graphene, um, and you can see that. Uh, the two eigenvalues do have a do have three three crossings here uh, at zero. So uh, because they cross, you can actually define a continuous evolution of these these eigenvalues. Uh, if you look at uh, this eigenvalue, so this k one is the direction which uh, which you sweep the uh, Wilson loop. So if you if you sweep over uh, k one, you find this uh, this eigenvalue winds winds by two pi actually, and also the other winds in the other direction. So, so this is defined as the Watson loop winding number. In this case, you have a winding number one, uh, which is actually characterizing the fragile topology of this these two bands. Uh, if you if you do a similar calculation for the axion is where um, we talked about earlier, uh, you can also see a winding number one actually. So, so this is a this is pretty general. Um, but if you look at monolayer graphene, uh, it will just uh, be different. Uh, there will be no windings. And so the two eigenvalues just. Uh, um, just go directly. So this this basically shows that twist body graphene and monolayer graphene are in different topological phases. Um, but how do we see this topology is fragile? Um, yeah, this is uh, actually um, also clear in, in Wilson loop picture. So um, yeah, this is not necessarily the actual case. But uh, suppose yeah, suppose you can you, you add some um, you add some trio bands. Um, 
if, if you just add a trio band, uh, because every side is decoupled, uh, what you will get is just an additional straight line here or, or here. So here, in this example, I add two trio bands. You, you just add two straight lines here and here. But then if you turn on the couplings uh, between them, um, yeah, you actually need to prove that, but uh, uh, here I just to show the result. So then the gaps, uh, gaps between these eigenvalues can open uh, at non-zero uh, positions, and then what you uh, what you get is is a, is a four uh, four eigenvalues as shown here. So in this case, you don't you don't have windings actually, uh, because this is a this is not going from pi to minus pi. So it's 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 not it's not winding. So after coming here, it it will go back. In, in another path. So in this case, uh, you, your winding number becomes zero and your system is trivialized. So this, this means you add some trivial bands, you can trivialize this topology. Um, and also, uh, let's look at the um, symmetry protection. So if you break C to T symmetry, um, the Watson loop, uh, basically, this Watson loop operator will no longer be a form lambda sigma y. So you can have you can have some other matrices like sigma z or sigma x, and that will gap gap basically gap out these crossings. So what you what you get is again there's no winding again. So so this basically shows this is a symmetry protected and also a fragile, a fragile topology. What about the crossing at pi? If you didn't um, right there. There's no crossing at pi actually. I think. Uh, oh oh there's a, there is yeah okay. Um, sure, yeah, I guess that will open. Up as well? Yeah, that 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 will open. Uh, let me see. Maybe that's not because um, I think the in that case lambda is pi, then plus pi and minus so pi. Or, pi, plus pi and minus um, oh yeah, they're the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. This is a, <coughs> a illustration, so yeah, I should modify this. Yeah, there should be also a gap opening there. And another question about the upper picture. Mm -hmm. you know, as you say, there's no winding number, but there is the feature that you have to go around twice to repeat yeah, in central um, bands. Is that still a topological feature? Um, so that still has maybe, a little I mean, bit of non-triviality? Well, uh, <coughs> you know, you know, the truly trivial ones, uh, they just you just go around once yeah, and repeat, guess, whereas this I guess you have you can, to go around twice. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. uh, yeah, I'm not sure about yeah. that, but um, I just wonder if that's yeah, I mean that's a feature which has any significance. Yeah, it's it's just a uh, yeah, not not well that well defined. If if you look at the uh, elementary band representation uh, analysis, it will be true. So yeah, maybe right. there's some right, but here it yeah, is a feature yeah, and yeah, it's robust, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Does it have any consequences? Or is it just, um, yeah, okay, just go yeah, ahead. that's that's not not yet clear to me. Okay. Okay, yeah, so we've talked about the concept of fragile topology, um, <coughs> but one might wonder what effects it could have. So um, um, in strong topology or stable topology, it's quite clear that usually there is a edge, uh, boundary edge correspondence. Uh, for example, in topological insulators, uh, quantum spin hall, uh, this is a quantum spin hall example again, uh, you have protected uh, edge states, helical edge states uh, with op opposite spins. So, um, uh, so, so for the broader crystal lines, layers, you can also, um, if you, if you if you cut a surface which preserves the crystal symmetries, uh, which you need to protect the topology, um, the edge states will still be there. You you still get some gap is edge states. So for stable topology, um, edge states is quite a quite a clear uh, categorization. Um, at the same time, in a bulk, of course. Uh, if you look at just a one topological band, you, you can also uh, you can you cannot find the uh, local winding functions. That's another feature we talked about earlier, but but this is a, this is not quite um, detectable um, previously, I would say. Um, so, but for fragile topology, for fragile topology um, in general, there's no guarantee that you have um, protection of any kinds of edge states. For example, in the axial insulator case. Once you break time versus symmetry, uh, it's known that the edge states will just uh, be gapped out, and you can continuously <coughs> deform them into the bulk states. And in this case, you won't have uh, protected edge states. So uh, one might wonder uh, what uh, what topological effects the fragile topology can have. 
Um, so, but, but the other feature actually remains that that is there's no local one-year functions within just the, um, the bands you consider. So, um, so if there's some topological effect, it has to be related to one-year functions. And um, yeah, so this is actually um, actually the, the general understanding for the effects I'm going to talk about. Um, so first, actually, um, I'll show that this, uh, this fragile topology has some effects in Hofstadter butterfly. Um, this is not only for fragile topology, it's also for uh, strong topological uh, systems. Um, now basically, um, Hofstadter butterfly is basically <coughs> when you add the magnet fields to your lattice and the flux is comparable to one flux per unit cell, um, then you will get, get some um, fractal-like bands, uh, which are called Hofstadter butterfly. So uh, this is the, the original example by Hofstadter. Uh, you just consider a one band model on square lattice. Uh, you have, this is zero, zero field band dispersion. Uh, and under field, you get these um, Hofstadter butterflies. So at the small magnet field, you, you can see these are, these are just Lano levels um, from band bottom and band top. Um, but in the middle, they, they become fractal-like. Um, so in this example, uh, a clear feature you can see that uh, is that this Hofstadter butterfly is energetically bounded between band bottom and band top. Um, and this is a, uh, you can understand in this way because this band bottom always have lana levels going upwards and band top always have uh, lana levels going downwards. So, so they basically like uh, shrink the energies um, and the, the, the spectrum is bounded by the bandwidth. Um, but this is not the case for a topological band. For example, if you consider a, a chain sphere, so here, uh, here this is a two-band chain sphere. You have, you have, a, you have uh, basically it's this, this very, the simplest model of chain chain sphere. You have a band uh, here with chain number uh, plus one, and here you have chain number minus one. Uh, so this gap is not true. So um, if, if you just look at this spectrum, there's nothing special in the bulk, uh, I mean, unless you look at the edge. Um, but, but if you look at the Hofstadter butterfly, uh, so uh, to, just to mention, the Hofstadter butterfly are all bulk structures, uh, bulk eigen um, values. So, so you, don't, you don't have edge state uh, here. Uh, but still, uh, even in the bulk states, you can see that uh, as the field turns on, um, the, the, two, uh, the butterfly of the two bands are connected with each other. Uh, or in other words, if you just look at this, this topological non-trivial bands, it's half the butterfly is, is not bounded by the um, energy, energy range of this band. Uh, instead, it goes to, goes to the other band and have a connection. So, uh, yeah, basically this is what I want to say. Uh, the topological state uh, will have this, in general, this connection between a half the butterflies of different bands. Um, and there's a general understanding. Uh, this is not a proof, but just some understanding. Um, recall that uh, uh, as long as you have topology, no matter it's fragile or stable, uh, it indicates you don't have local one-year functions. But if you insist that you want to write a, write a tight binding model within just these bands, uh, you can have non-local one-year functions and long-range hoppings. Um, yeah, we say, uh, suppose, suppose you just have one band, uh, one band model with these hoppings. Um, so in general, then um, under magnetic fields, uh, basically what you do is uh, these, uh, these hoppings acquire the phase given by the power substitution. So um, mathematically, there's a very simple uh, theorem called josh theorem. Basically, uh, suppose, suppose, you don't, uh, suppose your on-site energies are all the same, uh, which I mean TIIs are all, all the same. Uh, then this eigen, the eigenvalues of this, uh, this Hamiltonian will be bounded by the summation of the uh, sum of, uh, of, the, of the, um, sorry, the absolute value of the hopping matrices and the hopping amplitudes. So, um, so if, you, if you have a short range hopping model, uh, no matter how the basis of this T changes, uh, you always have a finite bound. So that's, that's when you have a trio band. You, if you have a trio band, you have finite numbers of or basically short range uh, finite numbers of hoppings. So you have a, you have a finite bound for your energies. Um, so even, even if you turn on a magnetic field, you, you would see the Hofstadter butterfly be bounded by some, some energies. 
But if you have a topological band, uh, in principle, if you want insist to write this such a model, you will need an infinite number of hoppings, um, basically not decaying very fast. So there's summation, uh, the summation of all these hoppings usually diverges. So you don't you don't have this bound. Um, and in this case, um, you will see that the half there butterfly is energetically unbounded. It, it will just uh, go away. Because at zero magnetic field, of course, you can, <coughs> you can fine tune the phases between all these hoppings to get a small energy band, a uh, small, small energy range. Uh, but uh, when the magnetic field is turned on, in general, you get these phases, and they will just uh, uh, no longer be destructive. Instead, of, instead of they, they become constructive and give you a large energies. Uh, so unless unless the half zero butterfly meets some other bands which which trivializes your your topology, in that case again you, together with those bands you can construct a, a short range model. So the half zero butterfly uh, might might be stopped uh, when, when when you hit some some bands that trivialize it. Yeah. Sorry, um, so I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, aren't you able to actually form a non-symmetrical uh, short range? Uh, uh -huh. functions. I mean, um, probably yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's a possibility. Um, yeah, you mean, you mean, in some cases, um, yeah. So, so, yeah, that's. I guess that's not answered yet. Yeah, that's a good question. So, in principle, if you if you choose some um, symmetry broken one-year functions, you could have some. Um, you you could have some short range model. Um, Actually, first, I'm not sure whether that's uh, that's uh, that's always doable. Um, sometimes, even if you have non uh, non symmetric winding functions, you still need some long range hoppings. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, so the other point is this is just the argument. So the proof so far is not not clear yet. So yeah, I would say that's not answered yet. Okay. Um, yeah, but at least this this says that. Uh, uh, if you have some non-locality, um, this properties of uh, your your energy energies is kind of unbounded. This is kind of, seems to be quite general um, numerically. So um, yeah, so here is a here is the is an example of the fragile topology uh, of the winding number one I talked about earlier. So this is a model. Uh, this is a four-band model uh, aimed to characterize the fragile topology of the twist body ravine. So um, basically, you can add uh, additional uh, two additional bands here. Um, um, so we, altogether, you have four bands, and uh, uh, within so within these two bands, um, yeah, this is a in this model within within these two bands, you can realize either a Wilson loop winding number one or zero. So this is a this is a trio phase with winding number zero, and if you turn on magnetic field, you can see the uh, half there butterfly is well bounded between uh, between them, by the bandways, uh, and there's no mixing between the butterfly of them. Uh, and in this case, if you uh, yeah if you if you have a non-trivial winding number, you, you immediately see that the butterflies of the two uh, of the two bands are mixed together. So um, this is a basically understand. Can kind of be understood from the picture I, I just talked about. Um, so uh, this model is actually not not quite realistic for twist body graphene because uh, it's not particle hole symmetric. For twist body graphene, uh, there's another model um, which discussed by Ashwin's group. Um, so they add they add altogether ten bands in the system. Uh, you can see that. So basically, you can add all these bands at different weak half positions. And uh, in this in this way, you can realize a band structure where the lowest two bands near zero have a non-zero winding number. And if you turn on the magnetic field again, what you what you see is uh, the half star butterfly of the lowest two bands are connected with the higher bands um, here, basically at one flux per unit cell. Um, and basically, this this uh, this gap originally it's it's a trivial gap with two number zero. Afterwards, it become it, it's replaced <coughs> by this secret one gap. So um, if we look at the um, the actual model of the um, two spiral the continuum model, uh, this is a one valley continuum model. You can also uh, you can also look at the Hausdorff butterfly, but in this case uh, in this case uh, it's a little bit uh, different from tie binding models. 
for tie binding models, hostile butterflies are always periodic, um, usually periodic. Once you have the your smallest hopping loop um, to get two pi flux again, your your hostile butterfly uh, completes one period. But for a continuum model, uh, basically this twist variable thing continuum model can be thought of as um, you have infinite many um, orbitals in, in one burden zone. So in this case, half the butterfly doesn't have a period. So um, in order to, um, so, so in, that, in this case, uh, we just look at the half the butterfly from zero flux all the way to infinite flux, uh, just to look at the whole half the uh, spectrum. And uh, what we find is, uh, yeah, it, it's a little bit tricky. There are, there are different phases uh, with respect to system parameters. For example, this is theta, uh, the twist angle, and this is a, um, this is a deformation, a deformation um, parameter. So what you can, uh, what you can see is, so uh, there are three phases, but all the three phases have the, has the fa feature I should mention. Uh, in this, uh, in this uh, large angle phase, what you see is, um, yeah, this is not quite clear. This is a large angle, so this is a, uh, this is just a electron part of the band structure. So this is the lowest uh, conduction band, and there's a symmetric lowest uh, valence band here. Uh, so if you look at, uh, so actually, because there's no in, indirect gap, it's not quite clear, but there should be a gap here. So the half standard butterfly of the lowest two bands uh, starts from here, uh, but at one flux per in cell, again, it's connected to uh, higher bands, the half standard butterfly of the higher bands. Um, this is similar to the 10 band model seen here. Uh, this uh, this connection one flux per unit cell, <coughs> um, and this is uh, if you, if you look at Landau fans of the su such a band structure, uh, such such a half star butterfly, uh, there's a feature. Uh, basically, you can see there's a C equal to plus one gap extending all the way to higher magnetic fields. Uh, so basically, in Landau fans, people can detect uh, the churn gaps um, uh, by measurements. Uh, so basically, this this will show that there's a nuclear four, uh, four four coming from the spin and valley degeneracies. There will be a nuclear four uh, gap, which is extends all the way to higher bands. Um, so uh, because twist particle thing has a has a very large unit cell, uh, this is uh, <coughs> experimentally detectable. Um, basically, you can reach one flux per unit cell by, um, for example, about. For one degree, it's just a 25 Tesla, which is reachable experimentally. Um, yeah, so, so then there's a, another phase, lambda 2, which what is a little bit. What's the on the vertical axis here? Uh, this is the uh, relaxation parameter, basically, okay. yeah, saying mm -hmm. the re reduction of hopping at AA stacking. <coughs> so, um, yeah, so, so, but there's a, there's a phase, lambda 2, uh, which is a little bit tricky. If you look at any finite uh, finite uh, um, flux, the half dive butterfly is not connected uh, of the lowest to lowest band. So this is the lowest connection band. The half dive butterfly is not connected to higher bands, but uh, actually it's connected at infinite infinite flux. Um, so infinite flux actually is is indeed a part part of the half dive butterfly because re remember that this half dive butterfly uh, of continuum model does not have a period. But you can you can still recover this period by identifying plus infinity and minus infinity. Um, <coughs> in this case, uh, phi to infinity can be regarded as the half period point of the half dire butterfly. Um, yeah, just to, to see to see that uh, you just uh, you might notice that uh, zero magnetic field is C two T invariant, but infinite infinite magnetic field is actually also C two T invariant. You, you can also see that in the model. So. So this 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 behaves exactly like zero point and pi point of the um, tie binding model half star butterfly. So in this case, the half star butterfly is still connected between the lowest band and higher band. Um, and finally, there's a, this lambda three phase. Uh, it gets more connections. Basically, it's it's connected at both one half flex and and one flex. Um, yeah. So as I mentioned, this is a if you look at Landau fans, Landau fans basically measure the longitudinal conductance of the um, uh, of the of the sample under magnetic fields. You will see uh, you will see these Landau fans. Uh, so in this case, there are, there are two Landau fans coming out, um, extending to higher bands. Uh, so this is a 
this this is therefore an experimentally testable fragile topological uh, effect. Um, okay, so now uh, let me move to another effect, um, which is a which is basically the fragile topology also helps helps enhancing <coughs> the superconductivity uh, under some conditions. So um, yeah, just to, uh, to 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 see that, then let, let me just uh, review that, uh, briefly review that in twisted particle thing, uh, people get interested in the, this system because it shows superconductivity. Um, upon twisting, and this this uh, superconductivity is only seen at uh, uh, when, when you're near the Maggi angle. So the Maggi angle um, I didn't mention previously, but Maggi angle is defined um, if you if you if you look at the band structure of two spirographing. Uh, when you're near Maggi angle, you would find the lowest two bands become extremely flat. So um, so that means this superconductivity is really happening uh, in these in these very flat bands. Um, so, uh, so, 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 therefore, um, this is a this is a motivation that we should consider superconductivities in flat bands. But usually, usually uh, in two dimension, superconductivity is not preferred in flat bands if, if the bands are trivial. So, um, just to recall that, um, basically, uh, basically, um, we know that in two dimension, there is no long range order. Actually, so so actually, two-dimensional superconductor does not have long-range order. It's, it's not understood in a, in the same way as three-dimensional ones. Uh, instead, it, it needs to be understood in terms of the BKT transition. Uh, so the superconductivity is actually in a BKT phase. Uh, basically, basically, if you do a mean field calculation, of course, you can you can get some other parameters. Um, um, yeah, you, you get an amplitude and also a phase factor here. So, uh, uh, and when, when you consider the fluctuations in the system, uh, the super, uh, this superconductor will be, uh, will be described by an effective XY model. Basically, um, basically <coughs> this phase can fluctuate in the space. Um, and the coefficient of this, uh, this, um, phi, uh, this gradient phi squared uh, is called the phase stiffness or superfluid weight. Um, so you can you can calculate this ds by by just doing variations with respect to gauge field a. Uh, so this f here is the free energy. So um, this is also basically basically the coefficient of the lambda equation, uh, just from the definition of itself. So yeah, so 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 it's a, actually a, also a measurable quantity. So in Ginzburg lambda theory, uh, if you just uh, plug in all these. Um, all these auto parameters, um, you will find uh, the free energy be given by this formula. Uh, so basically, this this give you a give you a super connected uh, super fluid density, um, uh, which is proportional to your super uh, super conducting uh, density, but uh, um, divided by the effective mass of these of these uh, electrons. So. Um, so then, this ds actually determines your your your, uh, your superconductivity temperature, basically because in, in two dimension uh, vertices of the uh, superfluid vertices can can arise spontaneously. Um, so if you if you consider the energy of vertex, you, you would find uh, its energy is proportional to log of the size. Uh, but at this, uh, at the same time, the entropy of this vertex is also proportional to log log of the system size. So this gives you a free energy of this. Of of, a, of one vertex um, to be of this form, so so if temperature is too high, then this coefficient could be uh, negative. Uh, sorry, there should be a t here. Sorry, yeah, um, yeah. So so this gives you the BKT transition. Basically, for for temperature smaller than T C, this T C uh, vertices are not preferred. So you get a you get a kind of order state, but it's actually not a long range order, it's a quasi long range order. Um, but for a temperature higher than TC, uh, vertices just proliferate and you, you get no, no long range order, and in that case, you, you just get a metal. Um, so, um, yeah, so, so in general, this TC, uh, the BKT temperature will be smaller than the mean field, mean field, KT, uh, mean field superconductivity temperature. The mean field temperature is just the your zero temperature um, pairing divided by 
to KD. So um, in general, su super negativity is reduced kind of in two dimensions by fluctuations. Um, but recall that in ginsburg landau theory, we get a DS which is, um, uh, which is inversely proportional to uh, effective mass. So if you have a flat band, uh, that means uh, M star goes to infinity and your TC just goes to zero. So in this sense, flat bands um, do, not, do not prefer superconductivity in two dimension. Um, so why, uh, yeah, so assume, of course, the two by the graphene not necessarily have that flat band, but uh, we can ask a question why the flat bands can have, can have a superconductivity. So uh, this actually, so actually, for, for, for this, uh, if, if you consider a trio band, there's actually a picture why the superconductivity, um, the phase stiffness goes to zero. Basically, uh, if you have a trio band, you can decouple them into local winding functions. And these winding functions, uh, in the flat band limits, these winding functions just don't have hoppings in between. So they just behave as decoupled uh, orbitals. Uh, so each orbital, of course, they can have a pairing. Um, but different, uh, the nearby side won't have a strong correlation, so that, that basically uh, says this phase stiffness goes to zero. Uh, but for topological flat bands, recall that if, if we insist to write a tight binding model or yeah, hopping model for, for the topological band, it will have non-local winding functions. So in this case, there will be overlaps between these orbitals and the uh, pairings on these orbitals should still have a correlation. So that's the, that's the basic uh, uh, expectation that if you have a topology in the flat bands, your, your superfluid density can be non-zero. So uh, indeed, if you just uh, consider a simple model, you have a, you have a bunch of flat bands uh, which are degenerate. Uh, so for simplicity, you just consider they're exactly flat and they have a gap to all the other bands. And uh, assume, uh, assume you, if you first do a mean field calculation and you get some pairing, pairing delta um, inside these flat bands. Uh, so here I just assume the, the gap to the other bands is much greater than delta zero. So in this case, you can, you can basically project the physics onto these flat bands. So basically this UK, UK dagger is a projector to the, to the flat bands. So you can, basically you can consider such a, such a pairing and uh, uh, and you just uh, you can you can use the definition of uh, of superfluid weight um, to to derive the superfluid weight, and as a result, you find superfluid weight has an expression like this. So here, nu is the filling of, in these flat bands, and here you got an integration of, of the so-called uh, fubini studi metric. Uh, the fubini studi metric is is given by the wave functions, so it, it, it also reflects the information of the wave functions, how, basically how the, okay, how the evolution of these wave functions as function of k. So um, for true flat bands, um, <coughs> upon some deformations, basically in general, in general you, you can, you can uh, approximate uk as independent of k, so in this case gig could, could all, go all the way to zero, so this, this just means uh, your superfluid weight for true flat band can go to zero. But for non trivial bands, um, there's actually a lower bound for this Fubini student metric. Um, uh, this is first considered by uh, these people um, also, also quite recently. So if you consider, for example, uh, two term, term bands, but uh, with opposite chain numbers, uh, so they can still form a time also in their pairing. Uh, if you consider such a such a system, um, you can actually find that this uh, this Fubini studi metric uh, is bounded by the Berry curvature at each each k point. Um, the basic idea is you can you can define a, a positive definite matri matrix which has its Hermitian part given by Gij and anti Hermitian part given by um, Berry curvature. So the positive definiteness uh, definiteness of the matrix that, uh, give you this relation. So, uh, so then, um, together with the expression we have, uh, we find this. Uh, so here, the trace of the trace of your uh, superfluid density matrix um, is bounded by the integration of the um, curv Berry curvature, and the integration of Berry curvature in this case is non-trivial. It's the chain number, non-zero chain number. So, so this gives you a lower bound of the superfluid density. Uh, if, you, if it's an iso, isotropic system, then trace ds is just two times the uh, ds in each direction. 
So uh, yeah, so so this show, show example, if you have a topological flat bands, you you should have some non-zero lower bound on, on your superfluid density, and as a result, you're, you you get a non-zero uh, non-zero TC. So um, for two band, uh, so for for the C two T protective fragile topology, um, yeah, just using using previously we obtained that the Watson loop is of this form, and you can you can similarly show that this uh, Fubini fluid metric is bounded by um, basically, the winding number, the winding number of this uh, Wilson loop operator. So this again gives you a um, superfluid density lower bound. So uh, that kind of kind of says that um, why even if you have a fragile uh, uh, a flat band, you can still have some non-zero um, non-zero TC due to this topological uh, fragile topological index. Um, yeah, this is just an estimation. Uh, so basically, you can you can solve the equations to determine the lower bound for your TC. Assume assume you you have a mean field. You know the mean field delta, delta zero. So in this case, uh, in terms of biography, if you if you can if you assume the band is perfectly flat, and uh, so this is a for a quantum splitting, you just get get a TC equal to um, yeah, it's it's of the same order as the as the mean field TC. So in this case, um, yeah, so you, you, you do get you do get some natural um, contributions from topology. Um, but I want to, uh, I need to emphasize that this topological lower bound um, is only is only playing a dominant role when your bandwidth is much smaller it is smaller than uh, than the mean field delta zero you get. <coughs> so um, because because if the bandwidth is large, uh, your your effective mass is it's not not that large, and in that case, the uh, ginsburg landau contribution is comparable to, um, I mean, it, it's larger and larger, and will dominate over this topological feature. So, so this is a really working um, in a strong pairing, strong pairing case. Um, yeah, just to just to mention, so this in general, this indicates if I have a topological band, uh, the super connectivity, uh, super connecting TC. Can actually, uh, in principle, can actually be much larger than the bandwidth. This is not possible if you have a trio band. Uh, we know we, although we have a, a BCS BC crossover, um, basically your delta zero can be can be as large as possible. Uh, but uh, due to the phase fluctuations, your TC cannot exceed in general cannot exceed your bandwidth. But for a topological band, this this shows that um, there's a there's a way to uh, go beyond go beyond your bandwidth. Okay, uh, with this, I'll just uh, conclude my talk um, and uh, questions. Thanks. We can see B plus ID of something like you mean you mean what's different for P plus if if we have a P plus IP superconducting? Yes. So, uh, um, <coughs> yeah, that's actually um, in general uh, in general the this picture this picture of non-local winding function should still work, so you still you should still get some lower bound. But uh, but uh, you might need to do a do a different calculation to, to show this lower bound. Uh, because here, here I'm just uh, assuming a uniform uh, pairing because um, this is a uh, basically because you have no dispersions and uh, it seems that uniform a uniform pairing is uh, the most uh, straightforward. But if you assume some other kinds of pairing um, and do the calculations, you should also also find some lower bound. Yeah, but I mean this picture, this thing, this picture in general is is kind of a, um, the understanding. That lower bounds also would be uh, mm -hmm. bounded with the topology, or what, what's the expectation? Uh, you mean for the plus <coughs> IP? Yeah, yeah it's, it, I mean it certainly will have some information from topology. Basically, what you what you see is if you if you uh, calculate this DS, uh, what you would get is some derivative <coughs> of this matrix UK. Um, in, in this case, it's quite neat. It's just a Fubini student metric, but in that case, you still get some der uh, derivative of UKs, and from the derivative of UKs, you, the information of topology will be reflected.
There are no, there are no more questions. Uh, let's uh, thank the speaker one more time.